Hello, everybody. This is Luther. Welcome once again to another episode of Invest in the Word podcast. This is season number two, episode number six. Here we share the Word of God. We encourage those who are listening to this program to reach out to the Lord. Confess the Lord. Confess your sins. Hold on to faith. Things are just crazy in our world today, but there is faith and there is hope and there is trust that you can place in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today's theme is centered around the healing of God. What does the Bible say about healing? God healed then. Is God still in the healing business today? Well, I'm here to share with you good news. Yes, he is. Listen, Psalms 146 and 8 says, The Lord makes the blind to see. The Lord straightens up those that are bent low. The Lord who loves the righteous will be there for you. Listen, what does that tell us? That through God, many miracles can occur. So stay right where you are. Our guest today is Miss Audrey Thomas has an amazing story of healing and salvation, I know will be a great blessing to you and your entire family. And that's coming up right after this. Once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Invest in the Word podcast is sponsored by the Lux Monday Digital Music Store. If you love Christmas music, gospel music, and smooth jazz, just like the song you're listening to now, our music can be downloaded from our website, which is investintheword.org. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Invest in the Word podcast. The Word is the Word of God. I'm Luther, and I personally invite you to check out our website, which is investintheword.org, and join us by subscribing to the ministry when you get there. And please consider downloading music from the Lux Monday Digital Music Store. Your 99 cent download helps to support the continuance of this ministry. So now let's get right into the interview with Miss. Audrey Thomas, I'm telling you, this interview is awesome. This story of healing and salvation will be of great blessing to you and your family. So let's get right to it. God bless. my testimony, my trial season, healing journey of redemption. And for me, it began the um, summer of 1991 when God told me, I was sitting at the office and God told me, you're going to write a book. So immediately I heard his voice and I began writing a sleazy romance novel. But then (laughs) in the fall of 1992, I started having some severe pains in my ankle, in my right ankle. I didn't know what to make of them. You know, just started taking regular Tylenol, stuff like that. But then in early of 1993, I internally made the declaration to God. I said, Lord, I'm all in with you. It seemed like right after that, the bottom started to fall out. By spring of 1993, I I began having um, pain in my right shoulder. And I was put on some medications. But I noticed the longer I was on the medications, the more lethargic I became. Um, I was working uh, the graveyard shift, 11 to 7, and I would wake up at about 8, eight o'clock at night, 
get on the bus to take the bus to the light rail, like take the light rail to Timonium. But I was asleep the whole entire way. <laughs> wow. I got off at seven o'clock in the morning. I would sleep the entire way back. It's like I couldn't wake up. My goodness. In July of 1993, I collapsed at work on the job. And when I got mm. to the emergency room, what I, what, the, what I remember, one of the doctors said, they said two things. First, he said, well, he touched my, my traps, my shoulders. He said, mm. I have never felt anybody's shoulders be this tight before. Mm. He said, um, we think you may have had a mild stroke. So I'm like, well, I was under a lot of stress. We were planning a move. Um, everybody, my, we were moving from my mother's house. She was moving. My sister was moving. My daughter and I were moving the very next month. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting ready to go back to day shift. The month after that, I went out on disability. So I, when I left that job that day, I never went back. Right before I moved, because we still had to make the move. Every, everything was already in the works. I had an uncle bring me a bag of herbal teas. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything about herbal teas except about witch doctors and stuff like that. And I was like, <laughs> no, and my uncle was, was a drug dealer. I knew that. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, no, I think I'm going to decline. And I, I took them, but I never took them. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we moved into our apartment in August of 1993. Mm -hmm. The summer of 1994, God prompted me to start writing poetry. And he told me something. He said, I need you to forgive your adopted father for the father that he wasn't and honor him for the father that he was. I didn't know that God saying that to me was gonna be significant to me probably about a year and a half later. And, I, and I'm gonna to get to that. Um, so in November of 1994 to February of 1995, it was time for my medical paperwork to be filled out um, for my job to continue long-term disability. And it just floated around. It, there was no doctor to fill it out. I, my, my, somehow my primary care physician had left his post so my paperwork just floated around. When one of the HR representatives called me, she said, if you're that sick, why don't you apply for Social Security? I took her advice and I called and inquired about Social Security, did everything over the phone. I, I didn't have to go meet with anybody, just did everything over the phone. I'm so glad about that. So then in March to April of 1995, um, well, they fired me. <laughs> and I ended up losing everything, losing everything. Had to move out to Hartford County with my mother. And what year was this again? This was uh, March to April of 1995. Wow. And I had won my Social Security. When I, when I first got out to Hartford County, my last interview um, with um, the Social Security um, judge was 19, I think it was April of 1995. I won my Social Security, but I wouldn't get a check until almost the summer of 1996. Oh, my goodness. And my medical insurance wouldn't kick in until 1997. Ooh. And it just gets more interesting after that. So in June 1995, as soon as I got out here and got settled in with my mother, he said, I need you to write your story. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to write my story. I, I don't mm. even want to think about my story anymore. I said, you mm -hmm. already got me through that part. I don't want to go back through those memories anymore. I just can't do it. Um, but he sat me down and I sat at, I had a word processor back then because I don't think during that season they had personal computers. If they did, I didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> And so I started writing my story and I cried through the whole entire first chapter. Wow. Um, I got to chapter five and then right as I got to chapter five, I noticed some things really started happening. Mm -hmm. There was a sudden sadness that started coming over me. Mm. Um, and and so it, the pain started with me. I, I started having pain in my right shoulder before mm -hmm. I collapsed on the job. But by, time, the, by, by August of 95, I was having pain in my neck, right shoulder and my back. Hmm. And it was so severe. I had never felt anything like that before. And I had had some neck problems because I was getting um, um, massage therapy for, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but I had never felt anything wow. like this. Wow. And by, by October 1st, 1995, I called my doctor. Um, and, he, and I asked him, I said, well, can I take massage therapy out? Can I get it out here? Because I was getting it in, in Baltimore. And so he signed me up for it. And my appointment wouldn't be till October the 1st. That was the earliest they could do for me. So stay right where you are. More of our interview with Audrey Thomas right after our health tip with Cheryl on Happy and Healthy. The scripture that I will be sharing today is in Psalms 139.14. I praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous is thy work, and that my soul knoweth right well. The human body contains 75% of water. 
It includes the cells, the fluid in the blood, the saliva, and the intestines. Other percentages of the human body contains the brain, which is 75%, the heart, which is 75%, the lungs, which is 86%, the kidneys, which is 83%, the blood is 83%, and the muscles is 75%. Our thirst mechanism is often mistaken for hunger. 75% of the population is dehydrated, and that is a lot. So we really need to drink plenty of water because it's very important. Our body really needs it. When you are experiencing dehydration, these are the symptoms. Dry mouth, dry skin, overly thirsty, joint pain, and sometimes very sickly on the stomach. Just a few. I like to share a few other examples. Drinking water at the correct time maximizes its effectiveness on the human body. Two glasses of water waking up helps activate the eternal organs. One glass of water 30 minutes before breakfast helps digestion. One glass of water before taking a bath or a shower will help prevent blood pressure. And lastly, one glass of water before going to bed at night will prevent strokes and heart attack. First Chronicles 1 and 7, Yahweh appeared to Solomon, ask whatever you want and I will do it. Sometimes we have to go to Yahweh and ask him for health, for healing, because we know that he's able. What did he say? He said, I am able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask. And all we have to do is ask Yahweh so we can be able to be fit for the kingdom and be healthy. So let's just stay healthy and happy. Happy and healthy. See you next time and stay healthy and drink plenty of water. So the day of the appointment, I get a call from the cab company, which was my transportation, and they saying, well, we can't pick you up because your insurance has been canceled. So <laughs> because I had won my social security welfare was no longer dealing with me anymore. And they were paying for my medical insurance at that point. So I had no, they let me stay on the, the cash part of it for my daughter, but I had no medical insurance. And so I wasn't able to go to the, the massage therapy. And so I'm running to these emergency rooms because I'm just feeling sicker and sicker. And I ended up racking up like $2,500 worth of hospital bills because I had no, no medical care. Um, in November of 1995, my mother had just had gallbladder surgery and God instructed me to make the Thanksgiving dinner. Now, it was very interesting by that time because by that time, I could not breathe. I, I was losing my hearing. I couldn't, I could barely blink. Um, I couldn't go to the bathroom at all. I, I couldn't have a bowel movement. And I was hearing voices <laughs> telling me, kill yourself, jump out the window, kill your family. I'm like, oh my Lord. So when he told me, to make the Thanksgiving dinner, the first thing I said to him was, Lord, do you know there are knives in the kitchen? <laughs> I just don't trust me right now. So he led me downstairs to make the Thanksgiving dinner. And, and go, upon going down the steps, I had to sit on each step and scoop down because every time I would try to walk down the stairs, my muscles would just give out and I would just fall down the steps. I did that numerous times. And so I made my way to the kitchen to make the Thanksgiving dinner. Everybody raved over it. I couldn't eat none of it. Um, but before everybody left the house, my uncle bought me a, um, well, he gave me an herb book. He said, listen, I know I gave you the teas before. You didn't do anything with them. He said, here is a book. And the book was called Back to Eden by Jethro Kloss. And it was a book that taught about herbology and the, the benefits of herbs on the, on the body and on the, the different systems and, and the functions of them. And so I took the book, I, I made my way back upstairs, and when I went and got back in that bed, I was in that bed for four months. 
time, the last little day I was really out and about that Thanksgiving day. That was 19, November, 1995. So I studied the, no, when I got back up there, the next day I picked the book up and I don't know how I read this a thousand page book because my eyes were crossed. I mean, it's, it's like every muscle in my body was spasming simultaneously, all of them from my head to the soles of my feet. And I was in excruciating pain. Um, even my, I couldn't move my tongue. You know, I, I remember at one point I um, stood up in the middle of the floor and just yelled out, Jesus, save me. And I was studying to be a Jehovah Witness. So I don't even know why that came out of me. <laughs> Jehovah didn't come out that time. Jesus, save me, came out of me. And right at that point, God started speaking to me. And so when I, I took the book back upstairs, the next day, God told me, he said, whatever that book tells you to do, do it. So I studied the book, made a list of the herbs that I needed, but I didn't have any money. <laughs> and my uncle is, is calling me during this time nonstop asking me, you know, do you want me to take you to the herbal store? I'll come and get you. And I was like, I can't get out of the bed and I have no money. So um, from December, 1995 to January, 1996, I went to the emergency room, I think two other times. Um, and I was weak, cross-eyed, my nervous system was off. I remember laying in the bed one day, looking over at the clock. It was a digital clock. I was laying still, but it was shaking. <laughs> I was like, what in the world is going on with the clock? Not realizing it was me. Um, I lost hearing. I had a severe pain in the left side of my head, right above my ear, that I would later find out was when the muscle spasm, it knocked a bone out of place in my ear. Um, also later found out that the muscle spasm so bad that they there's supposed to be a curve in your neck. It's, it straightened my neck. And I couldn't even touch my head to my chin. Um, and when I went to an orthopedic doctor to find out about that, he said, I've never seen anything like this before. So they, they really couldn't help me. Um, by, um, by February 1996, I went to Johns Hopkins. That was the last emergency, emergency room I went to. And they said, well, we can see that you have excessive air around your bowels, but we don't know why it's there. So when I came home from that, that and I, I had to press my way there because I, I was so weak. But when I came home from that visit, I realized, you know, and all of the years of doctors being a part of my life, because I was born with a heart defect. I was, I was born sick. I was born premature, needing a blood transfusion, had rheumatic fever at one point. I had a whole, stuff, a whole lot of stuff going on with me. So I was familiar with doctor's care. But during this season, no doctor can help me because they didn't know the answer. So I came home. And it, it's, to me, it's almost like that's when the depression just ramped itself up. I have never felt that sad in my life. I couldn't laugh. I, I, I didn't want to die, but I didn't know how to live. I really didn't want to cry because I wasn't a big crier. But I just, so I just laid there, just laid there, contemplate every day. Now you have to take this breath. You have to breathe. You have to breathe. Um, um, February 1996 was started, and this is after God spoke to me. Um, February 1996, my daughter brought to mail, the mail to me and, and, because I was in a deep depression, I would just toss the mail behind me on the bed. So I had a big, gigantic pile of mail behind me on my bed. And so the Lord spoke to me that day. He said, you need to look through that pile. And so when I looked through the pile, I noticed there was a little herbal catalog from a company called the Health Center for Better Living based out of Florida that was in there. And so when I opened it up, I looked at it. I said, oh, my goodness, this is a catalog. So I um, looked at it, noted that the prices were very, very, very affordable, but I didn't have any money. <laughs> but I took notes. I wrote down what I needed for my symptoms because I had studied the herb book. And then I just started showing the list to God every day. I knew he wanted to answer me through these herbs because he told me, whatever that book tells you to do, do it. So I knew he was leading me in that direction. If you, can get them, you can get them in pills. You can get them in... Um, um, powders. I, I chose to get mine in pill form um, when I finally did make my order. And I'm, I'm going to get to that um, because God had to answer me. I just couldn't make it. I had the answer. Of now, now I knew how I could get the earth because I couldn't get out of bed to go get anything. So I had where I could order them from, but I still had no money. So um, <laughs> um, shortly after that, I, I felt like I was about to pass out one day. I said, Lord, if I pass out, I'm not coming back. I know it. So the Lord <laughs> asked me a very peculiar question. He said, well, what did the book say? He, no, he said, you need potassium. Now, what did the book say about potassium? And I'm thinking, I'm trying to, about to black out. I'm like, this is not the time to be questioning me. I'm about to So I, just, I remember that the book said potassium is found in oranges, bananas, and tomatoes. 
And, and the Lord said, I need you to go to the kitchen. And I, I mean, that was my, I was at my ultimate weakest. I, I could barely go get up and go to the bathroom. And I'm like, go to the kitchen. Okay, now I'm gonna have to pr practically crawl to the kitchen. I'm like, and do you still want your knives in the kitchen? <laughs> in the kitchen. Even when I was preparing the Thanksgiving dinner, it was so severe. I had to, re when I was holding the knife, I had to remind myself, this is a utensil, not a weapon. I had to talk myself through, just cut. It was just that deep. And so when he asked me to go back to the kitchen a second time, I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? So <laughs> I scooted to the kitchen. I got to the kitchen. God gave me my direction. He didn't give me any direction until I made my way to the kitchen. He said, "Look in the re no." He said, "Look in the refrigerator." So in the in the in the in the vegetable um, drawer, I looked in the refrigerator. There was one orange, and so I didn't have time to peel it because I was shaking. I was so weak, and 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 so I cut the orange open and just drank the juice out. And then the Lord, after I drank that, the Lord said, "Now look atop the refrigerator in the cabinets." And when I did that, it was two cans of tomato juice. And so the Lord said, drink them. Now the book tells you don't mix fruits and vegetables together because they're too acidic at the same meal. But because God told me to do both, I just did it. And I noticed my energy level came, I mean, it just came out of nowhere. And I, so I was sitting at the kitchen table, but I still couldn't breathe. And I was like, Lord, my sinuses are, are wrecked up. My, 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 my throat is wrecked up. I can't breathe and I can't go to the bathroom. He said, what did the book say about your throat and your sinuses? I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm trying to remember. And, and what, what, what came to my memory was the book said about your throat that ginger is a great remedy for the throat. And then the book also said that time is a great remedy for your respiratory passages. And so I'm sitting in the chair. I said, Lord, I don't have either one of those. The Lord said, go over to that spice rack sitting on the counter. Now, we never use that spice rack. Never. I forgot about it was there. <laughs> so... And so he sent me over there and I said, all right, Lord, I said, okay, I see this. I said, but I don't have the little mesh ball things that you put, put, put the herbs in. He said, he said, he said, get two regular tea bags out of the cabinet, tear the tops off of both, tear the contents out, put ginger in one, put thyme in another and paper clip them, steep them for three to five minutes. So telling you exactly what to do. Yes, sir. Exactly what to do. And so I did that. The first one I drank was, I still drank the ginger while I was still in the kitchen and it tasted like poison. I was like, oh my, God, how is this stuff supposed to do me any good? It's horrible. But shortly after I noticed my throat felt soup. And so I just sat there, I was like, just in shock. I was like, oh, this stuff, I'm just thinking out loud, oh, this stuff really works. So I, I was able to get back upstairs with the time. And then I drank that probably about a half an hour later. About, I would say anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour it's almost like something went whoosh in my body. My body jerked forward. It, 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 sh it shook my whole body. And my nose just started running. I could not. Get, I was like, oh, my goodness. This stuff really works. So I, I'm convinced at that point. So I, so I went back to sitting on the bed. I picked up my list. And I'm looking at the list. I'm like, this is what God wants to use for me. But I still had no money. <laughs> so um, I'm going to I'm, I'm try and get to my timeline because this is very significant. And so, oh, March, March, 1996, a month later, brought me the mail again. And again, I tossed it in the pile because I'm still in a depression, even though the herbs were, you know, I knew God wanted to use it. I was still in a depression. I just tossed it in the pile. And the Lord, yeah, he spoke again. He said, you better look through that mail. So when I looked through the mail, I found a letter from my former employer that fired me. And I opened it up and it was a check for $2,490. I was like, what? And... I said, this has got to be a mistake. So I called them and they said, no, this is from your 401k. You can either roll it back into the company or you can keep it. So on March the 12th, I made my first order of herbs. And now my original list was $300 worth, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to be that daring. I'm like, I don't know how this stuff is going to work. I'm not going to spend $300 on stuff yet. So I think I made it. And I think I wrote it in, I was keeping a journal during that time. So I wrote it in my journal. I think it was $45 worth of herbs I ordered. But two days later, after I made the order, God spoke to me again. He said, when those herbs come, no matter how you feel, good, bad, or indifferent, I need you to give me 30 days. And what he was asking me to was to continue to be patient and hope because it takes 30 days for the herbs to really get in your system because they're so gentle. So for me to really get the full effect, I would have to give the Lord at least 30 days. So he was telling me to just give him that. So my herbs came three weeks later, and the first herb I took was alfalfa. 
And about an hour, I don't even think it was that long. After I took the alfalfa, I went to the bathroom, had a bowel movement for the first time in months. It was so exciting to me. I was calling people. I went to the bathroom. <laughs> Because, well, the people that knew that I was, I was sick, because I had been calling them, asking them, do you breathe from your chest or breathe through your stomach? Because nothing wanted to move. Nothing. I couldn't, I couldn't, my toes felt like they were curling up. My, I was having uh, severe Charlie horses. My fist stayed, my hand stayed in a fist the whole time. I couldn't blink. I couldn't, I lost my hearing. And then eventually I lost the use of my tongue. And when I would call on the name of Jesus, it would come out Jesus. I, I literally could not even speak anymore. So when the alfalfa when I when the alfalfa worked, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this stuff is no joke." So I gave the Lord the thirty days. At the end of the thirty days, my skin. Oh, and by the way, the whole time I was sick, I had eczema in the folds of my arms where I, where you bend your arms. I had eczema, eczema breakout on both arms, really bad, and I had struggled with that from uh, when I was twenty, and I was at this point. 30, about 32. And so when I took the alfalfa, 30 days after that, the eczema was gone. I have not had a breakout since 1996 when I took that alfalfa at all. So those herbs really, God was using them to not only detoxify me, but to bring restoration to my body. By July 1996, I, I was able, I was mobile again, but I could barely, I could get up, but I could barely walk because I had lost all muscle tone. And now I was 267 pounds with no muscle tone. I couldn't clap. I couldn't tap my toes. All I could do was get up and go to the bathroom. And one day God told me, he said, I need you to um, stand up, lean up, get out of the bed and lean up against the wall so you can straighten your body out. Because I was in a fetal position and I had been that way for like months. November um, 28th, 1996, which was Thanksgiving day, God had instructed me to prepare my second Thanksgiving dinner from scratch. Every, just, I made everything like he did before. But when I came back up to my bedroom, the devil met me at my door and he called me a hypocrite. He said, oh, you're trying to celebrate with your family and celebrate the holiday and you know you're Jehovah's Witness and you ain't supposed to be doing none of that. So I said, well, I'm not gonna be a liar. And so I got down on my knees and I prayed a prayer, the, the most honest prayer I ever prayed in my life, not knowing it was a prayer of salvation. And the first thing I said to the Lord was, Lord, it ain't no accident I'm still alive. You must want me here for something. So I'm giving you all of me, here I am. I said, please, I don't know what you're going to do with me, but I'm just asking you to do something good with my life. Make something good out of me. Um, and once I said that, it seemed like every sin I have ever committed before then started just rushing out of my lips. I was confessing everything. Um, and then at, as I ended the prayer, I, I said, in the name of Jesus, amen. And as I was turning to get up off the floor, there was a wind in my room. Now, my door was closed. My window was closed. This was November. And there was this wind in my room. And when the wind landed on me, I felt, it felt like, like everybody said, every Christian says, the weight of the world was lifted off of me. I felt when the devil's hold on me released me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt when he, he loosed me. And what I noticed right afterwards, two things. Peace. First of all, it was peace. I had never felt a peace like that before. Um, I had started having um, anxiety attacks from the time I was six until that day I got born again. Never had another one. And, and I noticed that um, I, didn't, I wasn't anxious anymore. My mind was racing. And I told what I said, Lord, I know I'm supposed to let go and let you, but how do I cut this worrying off? You won't, I will. And two days later, I woke up and it was gone. <laughs> but it was gone. And so, it, it really is. And I, I haven't had a, a, an anxiety attack since. Now, when God sent me, when he first got me up and told me, I want you to go to church, because right after I got born again, I think the following weekend, God said, I want you to go to church. I was like, well, how? I, I can barely get out the bed. He said, no, I want you to go ahead and watch the television ministries. And so I started doing that. But what I noticed when I did that was something I didn't notice before. As soon as I looked up, now I have my Bible, I'm all excited. As soon as I looked up and saw the crosses on that pastor's robe, it almost like I threw the Bible up because I couldn't look at him. And it hit me. I said, what? And the, I said, what? <laughs> what? And the Lord said, you were under demonic oppression. And I was like, whoa, well, how did I get there? He said, false religion. I was like, 
Oh my Lord. So God had to really temper me just to watch that first program because those, I could literally could not look at the cross. I couldn't even look at it. So, but it, it, it completely was God. So, so, um, um, I moved out of my mother's house in February, 1998. I was up, I was up, but I still, I could still couldn't clap and nothing, none of that, but I could move around a little bit more. So in April of 19, 1998, God called me on my first fast, right as I got settled into my apartment. Um, and he told me to create an exercise tape. He said, start it out, do warm up songs, then do your intermediate workout and then do cool down songs. And he said, he said, I want you to walk in place. I want you to do leg lifts and I need you to learn to clap again. But I literally could not lift my arms to clap. I, just, I couldn't even, and I have a picture I was going to show you and I'll, I'll make sure you get, you, you get to see that because I have a picture of how much weight I had gained. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. So I lost 60 pounds just standing on the word of God. And the word that kept coming to my mind when Satan kept trying to bombard me was, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I, on that word and I lost 60 pounds and then after I was stronger I went back to my writing and I, I put the well first of all when God told me to write it's, I forgot about to tell you about that when God first got me out here and told me to write my story I didn't know how to write a story I didn't know how to write, write a book and set up a manuscript none of that but what happened was about I would say a couple of weeks after he told me to do that and I was writing a little you know the little cards from the correspondence schools one came in the mail and the Lord said, there you go right there. Take that creative writing. <laughs> um, but I started the course, but as sick as I got, I had to put it all down to fight the fight of my life. So I, I stopped, that's why I stopped the chapter five because I had to fight for my life at that point. And then once I, he, I was well again, he made me pick the book up, back up and finish um, telling my story. And then I had opposition from two of my, my female elders. So I, after, after my, the first part of it was written because he had me write it in a section. The first part was my childhood. All of the stuff, my, it was about my childhood. Yeah, because I wasn't married. It was about my childhood traumas. Um, and so after I finished the book, I said, Lord, you got to be kidding. I said, where's the happy ending? I said, because this just sounds like a tell-all to me. And I don't think I, well, I don't want to release a tell-all. Where is the happy ending? And so I put the book down and started writing Christian fiction. I wrote two of those books. <laughs> so, um, but, but in the process of the book, I did, get, I did get them published. Now, the first one is not in print anymore, but the second one still is. Um, but I put them down, and at the same time I put, no, I think the first one was written. Right after I finished that and released it, God, God started speaking to me um, about my marriage, the failed marriage and the failed relationships and how I was looking at mating and all of that stuff. And, and I didn't know anything about mating. And he had this little book. It was a T.D. Jakes book, and I won't, won't mention the name of it, but it was, I was trying to give it to my daughter. I had these books on my bookshelf, and I was trying to give some of them away to her. And she said, Ma, I'll take this one, but I'm not going to take the other one. Well, that was the one I was trying to give away to her. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but, and I did. So I gave her that one. She said, Ma, do you have an extra Bible? Because I lost my Bible. So I gave her the extra Bible. And then a couple of weeks after that, every time I would come into my living room, it's like that book would call me. And I was like, I don't want to read you. <laughs> I don't want to read you. <laughs> Please. So one particular day, the, the, the call was so strong. I said, all right, Lord. All right. I grabbed the little book, sat down on my couch, and started reading. And I got to page three, and something in that book scared the mess out of me. I just, I, it was almost like something hit me in my soul, and it scared me so bad. I just threw the book across the room, and I didn't pick it up no more. The next day I, I, I woke up and what I noticed was those plaguing thoughts that, that had been bothering me since I was six years old. I want a husband. I want a husband. I want a husband. And so God started ministering to me about why you want a husband. So he did a whole thing with that. And so after he, and God, God from the time he spoke to me, no, this is the first thing he said to me. I, I was, I stood up. I said, after I threw the book across the room, stood up and went in my bedroom and I said, Lord, what is wrong with me? Why am I constantly thinking about a husband? What is wrong with me? He said, you're desperate. And I said, okay, but why? He said, <laughs> he said, you tell me why. I said, I don't know how to tell you why. I need you to tell me why. So he said, have a seat. And from that moment on, he spoke to me every day for eight years straight. Every day. And he taught, he taught me everything about mating and 
first of all, healing. I had to get healed on the inside. And now that book is in published, published on publication now. It should be out in April. Um, yeah, so he took me on a journey. But what, when, I, when I went to look back and he told me recently, he said, he said, what you didn't understand was the reason why I took you the way I took you, he said, because I could have healed you instantly. He said, I chose not to do that. He said, because, because you were a sickly child, you gave full dependence to your doctors. He said, I needed you to take control back of your own health and well-being. I said, wait a minute, I gave you my, I gave me you and then everything, the bottom fell out. He said, well, that's the trial. And every Christian is going to get tested. I, I, Job got tested. And I remember doing that. Season, having, I said, darn, I feel like Job. <laughs> Not realizing I literally was having a Job experience where the devil was stripping everything. He stripped everything and left me desolate. And that's wow. where God was able to step in. Because once, I, I, you know, I, 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 every Christian, every believer says this. Hate that season, would never want to go back through it, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, um, in December, God had me put up a, a do my own blog site. Mm -hmm. And 2012, when he wanted me to put up my own website. And I did. I created mm -hmm. it up, and then I walked away from it. One of my sisters in Christ, she said, well, will you help me put up my website? I don't know how to create one. So I helped her create one. She said, well, will you write on mine? So I just started writing on hers. Right after I started taking the herbs and I started feeling better, God spoke to me. Audrey, he said, I'm giving you, he said, I'm going to make you a public speaker. And I don't know what he did to me, brother. Mm -hmm. Before then, I was very articulate on paper because I could mm -hmm. write my blood off. So the voice that you're hearing now, God did that instantly, right after he said that statement to me. Awesome. Something clicked with my mouth, my mind, and my heart, and they all of them lined together. Mm -hmm. I can speak my heart, establish my thoughts in an articulate way to present them to you. When, and I, I'm like, well, how? I, I, I thought when I thought he meant you're gonna sell herbs. So that's what I started doing. I started. I became a um a, a distributor of herbal medicines. So I did that for a couple of years, and the Lord said, no, that's not what I was talking about. And so when I when I started going actually going to the churches, one of the churches I went to, I, I they were I think they were having a Bible study down at the. I walked in, um, and I was talking to my girlfriend was talking to somebody. I was just standing there, and the pastor came out. I didn't know who he was. And I just got in this conversation and somehow the herbs came up. He mm -hmm. said, you know what? I have been praying that God would send me somebody <laughs> to do about this stuff. He said, yes, if you come and join our church, I'm going to make you the health minister over the house. <laughs> and so sure enough, he did. <laughs> and about a year after that, I was doing my first um, health conference with, with another teacher that they brought in. She was going to me, but I, I was. I was assisting her and showing, I was in that pulpit. I was like, well, how in the world did you take me from there to here that fast? And even when I, I, I you know, when I was writing my book, I was, I'm, I'm in the process of doing my final edits now. Every time I go back through the book, I say, Lord, if I didn't live this, I wouldn't believe any of it. But when I read yeah. it, to God be the glory. Amen. I was like, Lord, I know there are a lot of people thinking you ain't, you, they can never have a oneness like this. Now, what I found out recently, <laughs> Back in March of this year, I had a mm -hmm. dream, um, and 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 God was speaking to me through the through the dream. I, I was mm -hmm. I was living I was in a childhood house, and there was all this medical personnel running around, mm -hmm. and then, and and I went into the restroom, and I'm standing in this mirror, but the mirror was a big gigantic black wall. To the left of me, I could still see the medical personnel running around. To the right of me, I saw a picture of me as a as a five year old on, above the toilet, mm -hmm. and but she had glasses on. And I'm looking at the look, cute little picture of me. I was like, oh, I look so cute in the glasses. And I'm trying to find my cell phone to take a picture of the cute little picture of me in the glasses. And then mm. I woke up. And when I woke up, I said, wait a minute, Lord, I didn't even wear glasses back then. What are, what, what are you trying to tell me? And the Lord said, I made you a seer even back then. I said, a prophet? I said, are you kidding me? He said, yes. I said, that's why I can hear you the way I hear you. And people are looking at me crazy when I say, oh, no, God spoke to me and God spoke to me and God spoke to me. <laughs> He's been doing that ever since I was four years old. So, Audrey, I want people to be able to, to contact you. Give us your ministry affiliation name, your favorite Bible verse, as well as your church affiliation. My name is Audrey Thomas. My ministry affiliation name is A. Lynn Thomas. Um, my church affiliation is Love Fellowship Christian Center in Bell Camp, Maryland, under Pastor Dr. T. Anthony Thompson. And my favorite scripture is Psalms 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labors labor in vain. 
I want to thank my guest today, Audrey, for joining us here. Her ministry name is A. Lynn Thomas. And uh, reach out to her at her website as well. She has a singles website. That website is suitablesingles.org. And you can also reach out to her via mail at her P.O. Box, which is Suitable Singles, P.O. Box 660, Edgewood, Maryland, 21040. I want to thank everyone for joining me here for this episode of Invest in the Word podcast. I'm Luther, so reach out to me today at my website, which is investintheword.org. And when you get there, don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, as well as Pandora. So remember, Word Warriors, the Word of God, we must learn it, we must live it, then we must share it. This is Elder Luther Baker. See you for the next Invest in the Word podcast.